apart from the destruction that Marx talks about of the of the social order, which obviously would include religion and churches, right? Um, w- what what else is it at its core that the ch- that the church finds odious about Marxism and in you know what she has she said in her mm-hmm. condemnations and is she saying anything now? Yeah, maybe here I'll quote my uh, Jewish friend Dennis Prager, and he said. Uh, that when, when, after he read this book, and he already knew this because he studied Marxism for a long time, but he said, this is just pure nihilism. I mean, that's really what Marxism is. I mean, Mm -hmm. it it is indeed the ruthless criticism of everything that exists. It's Mm -hmm. just simply about tearing down the entirety of the order, Um, biblical, religious, natural law, um, as Marx and Engels say in the Communist Manifesto, uh, all morality, all religion, the church even understood how Marxism attacked the family. And, and there's a line in the Communist Manifesto that says this, quote, abolition of the family, exclamation mark, even the most radical flare up at this infamous proposal of the communists. So Marx and Engels in 1848 could already refer to abolition of the family as an infamous proposal of the communists. So, so people knew about this. They knew what was going on. By the way, this is why people like Marx were under you know, police surveillance by Prussian police spies, be, because you know, normal people understood in, in the mid 1800s just how destructive and insane the, this, this ideology was. I mean, this was obvious to people. It was just obvious to people. And only in a world like we are today, to quote Benedict XVI, the dictatorship of relativism, where everything is questioned and everything is redefined from unborn human life to one's gender to uh, to marriage to, I mean, speaking of gender, Facebook five years ago listed over 70 different gender options. Uh, the BBC did, a, did a, a documentary a year or two ago that listed over 100 different gender options. For, you know, woke Christians who are listening to us who would think you're being um, understanding and showing empathy for a guy who wants to be a girl or a girl who wants to identify as a guy. No, that's not enough. That's only like four gender options. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's, there's over a hundred, man, you're way behind. That, that's why the phrase LGBTQIA plus has been invented because you, you're, you need a plus for the dot, dot, dot for, you know, for the Many, 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 many gender options that you literally can't conceive of. How many options are there? As many as people want to invent. So, uh, so that's the that's the relativistic world that that we're in. And to bring it back to Marx, this is interesting. People don't realize this, Chris, but the in in the opiate of the masses essay by Marx, he actually commends Martin Luther. And um, he, he appreciates Luther and a, a writer for National Review criticizes for, uh, criticized me for pointing this out. And I say very carefully in that section that I'm not blaming Luther for communism, okay? But, but, right. but, Mar- but Marx there commends Luther for a crucial breakaway from the authority of the church. Because by allowing mm-hmm. for that breakaway from the authority of the church, it begins to allow people to each and every individual to become his or her own authority, including on matters right. of scripture and truth and morality. And so, you know, once mm-hmm. that that is broken, once that's open up, it allows for this kind of uh, religious relativism and moral relativism where we are today, this dictatorship or relativism. And the church over time, increasingly more and more and more over the years, church theologians have understood this. Here in America, Fulton Sheen was so brilliant in foreseeing all of this. I quote Sheen a lot. And, um, mm-hmm. and of course, he, he wasn't alone. Mm-hmm.